the Daily Stand-Up. I'm Denise Kwan, and I'm a developer advocate at Cisco. And I'm Mel Delgado, developer advocate at Cisco as well. Today, we're going to talk, it's somewhat of a loaded question, a loaded topic. Oh, and Oh, gosh. <laughs> but, what now? But, but what are you throwing but my way? But we're only going to talk about it a little bit, and we can talk about it in future episodes and dive deeper. Okay, I'm ready. The topic. Bring it. Automation. So we often Something hear near and dear to my heart, about yes. automation. Okay. You hear the buzzwords. We talk about it all the time. But you're you're an operations SRE. What can you actually automate? What can I automate? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> well, what can I automate? It's anything and everything that can be automated. I want to automate it. What does that mean, though? Okay, so like, look, I'll start with my lights at home. My, my lights at home are on a timer, and I have Alexa. I have to say Alexa, because if I say Alexa, it'll like pop off of my. So yeah, so I'm so used to saying it. So my Alexa goes off, and it it, it does a number of functions. So for example, at night, it shuts uh, shuts off my lights at a certain time. Um, I have it like change the temperature at certain times on a different schedule. And then I don't have to worry about it. I'm hands off. That, and so, that seems kind of lazy to me. Oh, you know what? My wife says the same thing. <laughs> that just seems like super lazy. But you know what? I think some of the best programmers in the world have sort of that lazy, I'll spend eight hours to automate something that would have otherwise taken me 15 minutes to do. Because eventually I just hit a button and off it goes and it does it. <laughs> no, but okay. But in all seriousness, the things that I like to automate, it's just anything that can be automated. Uh, I try to do, like, almost have like a rule of thumb a mental one. I don't always follow this, but if I need to, if I do something manually, say three times or more, I'm ready to just automate it away, because it doesn't make sense to keep doing the click ops thing. That yeah, only took me maybe 15 or 20 minutes, but, but that what? adds up after a long time. Because now that 15, 20 minutes, I could have been doing something else. Mm -hmm. So I would much rather have the machines work on things and people solve the problem. So that's what I want to do, is I want to, I want to focus on solving the problem, treating my infrastructure like a coding problem to solve, not so much something that I am going to jump onto the infrastructure and keep doing like, this is my mouse click world, but, this is, this is how I do mouse clicks. But can you give an example of something that you in an operations role would automate? Oh gosh, there's... Uh, because you know, there's all these yeah. people that they just hear the buzzword, oh you should automate, automate, but yeah. nobody ever talks about what you automate. What? Okay. Like, so, what is it? What actions are you automating? Yeah, yeah. So actions, there's just there's so many. I mean, okay. Here's an easy one. Easy one. Uh, we're gonna add an account. Somebody just joined our team, and I just want to basically drop it into a YAML file and take care of like everything else, like authorizing somebody for an account. So that's a new one. Somebody leaves the team. Okay, I'm gonna remove their access from, and I, that way I don't forget that. Oh. I removed it from over here, I removed it from over there, and oh, by the way, I should have removed it from, but I totally forgot. That's human error, yeah. right? And then suddenly we have not so great of a security posture because now there's there's an account for, you know, an authorization, an account for somebody who's not on the team anymore. Yep. So, that I mean, that's just one uh, out of a bajillion things. But another one is, I don't know, we were just talking about this in a session yesterday where um, I'm running, um, uh, Terraform, for example, mm -hmm. and I want to create policies within um, Intersight as one of our product lines. So uh, in the control plane, what I'm doing is I'm adding policy, but I'm not doing that in uh, in a way that's manual. So I'm not, okay. you know, I, I, I want to do that programmatically and I want everything to be in files, stored, shared in a GitHub repository, GitHub enterprise in our world. So you would share it with, you'd have, you'd, you know, just like developers. So we'd, we'd basically say, okay, I'm gonna make a change. Mm -hmm. I'll create a, a, a pull request. It's gonna be, you know, looked at by more than one person on my team. And then we'll, you know, we'll merge that into the main line. So that, I mean, those kinds of things, like automation provides me more than just having it automatically happen, which is something I'm super interested in. But mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I, I like all the other bennies that come with the world of automation. You know? I'm hoping that makes sense. Well, I know that a lot of people hear automation and they fear, well, if I automate everything, does that mean that my job is going to disappear? Ah, okay. I'm going to go for that one. I'm going to go for that one. <laughs> okay, so here's my take on it. You're going to automate. Okay, so here's the, 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 the thing is, let's see if I got you right. If you automate something, it means that I'm going to be out of a job eventually. Well, it depends on what be, is being automated and who did it. 
if you're the person that's doing the automation, the more you automate, the more value you, valuable you become. Because you're the maintainer now. You're yep. maintaining that code, and if something needs to change, you need to like automate it in just a slightly different way. Maybe it doesn't need to be automated anymore. Um, but again, you're, you're the maintainer of that. Now, if you're the person that said, I don't want to automate, and the reason why is because I fear for my job, then guess what? You weren't the person that was automating something, and you just kind of get automated away, maybe? Maybe your role or what you're doing, um, and you're going to be doing something else, probably. So, I mean, my advice would just be, be that person and aspire to be that person that wants to be involved with, the, with automating those things so you don't get automated away. And you know what? If you're in the position to automate your own job away, that's way better than just standing by and doing nothing and waiting for that moment to come. So it's like it's one of those like disrupt or be disrupted type of mindsets. But again, I, I hit on a word there. I think it's more of a mindset than a tool set. I yeah. say that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so having that mental, that mindset of saying, you know what, I, I really want to automate this away. I want to solve problems and let machines do the repetitive work, the, the, what I call the sweaty armpit work. Let's, but, let's mean, get rid of that stuff. I know? also so. I also think that when when we have a job for to do, your to do list is always so big, and you usually only chip away at like five things. Okay. So there's always more stuff to do. So when you automate something that you were doing, and now you don't have to do it anymore, and other than maintain to make sure that the script runs well. Okay. There you can start working on all of those other things that. Yeah. you might yeah. want to do or like to do or like, you know, you and I have side projects that we like to do, but we can never get to it because we're so busy doing all the other stuff that we're doing. So that could be a way to look at it is like, well, now maybe I can yeah. work on other projects that I wanted to do. Come up with things, be innovative, right? Okay, I automate away the, my manual tasks. What can I improve? and just start coming up with things like that. Yeah, totally with you on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you automate that stuff away, like just the, the daily craft of, you know, whatever your role is, it's, you know, it's in a technical sense. You know, those roles some, sometimes involve those things that you know you're doing click ops to, to go through. And, and, and if, it's, if it's possible to automate, yeah, get rid of that stuff. And like you were saying, you make more room to solve newer problems. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's just a recipe for, for success. It never gets old because you're always maintaining the older stuff and you have new stuff to automate, so it's kind of like you just have this newer like, thing to work with and it just keeps you much more entertained from a mental perspective, so. Yeah, I mean, automation, that's what we talk about all the time and trying to teach people how to automate. I think that a lot of people struggle with what, like, where do I begin? Where to begin? Uh, so I just did a talk at Cisco Live Europe, so you, you hit it. You struck a you struck a chord there with me. So, where to begin? I mean, granted, you, you could watch the talk. I think there's going to be a replay on it if you look up uh, Cisco Live 2023 for Amsterdam. Um, you'll see that the approach that I took is uh, in the talk: start small, pick something that's super small but very unimpactful. So, for example, in in network switching in the network world, typically there are a lot of things that could impact the network quite a bit. So don't don't aim for like, okay, I'm gonna go change interface configurations and so forth in a production network, okay? Don't, I mean, that's not a good place to start, perhaps. If you're just getting started with automation, start small. Try to, for example, programmatically somehow change the message of the day, say, on a switch. Very unimpactful. Mm -hmm. You could just say, hello world, on the message of the day, perhaps on some uh, used equipment, maybe. Try it like on, say, a Raspberry Pi, just change mm -hmm. You know, like the, the login banner, for example, there's, there's just a lot of ways that you could do something that's unimpactful, meaningful, but unimpactful. It's meaningful because you're learning how to, to automate things. Then move to like maybe more than one device. So maybe five devices, then try it at 10. Whatever you can afford to put in your, in your lab or your home lab at home, uh, even there are virtual machines, whatever it may be, try to do that automation just step by step. Then what will happen is the curiosity will take over. Yeah. Then you start thinking like, well, gee, if I did it this way, what's the impact of, say, having 100 things in my inventory list, for example? How do I manage inventory, right? Like, you've got all these things. Well, how do I address those? How do you organize that? And, and then how do I pass 
keys to it securely? How do yeah. I, there are gonna be all these questions that come up and that's how you start developing that curiosity, the knowledge and the confidence to continue going after it. Uh, and, and again, it's one of those, it'll, it could take you eight, 10 hours, 15 hours to go do something that will otherwise take you 15 minutes, but eventually your automation skills will get uh, better and better and it won't take you as long to try and automate things that are more, much more challenging as you go along. I'm gonna ask you one more question because I'm full of questions all the time. You only get one more. I only get you one only, more. That's it, yeah, yeah. Because you keep on using the term automate. Automate, automate, yes. But if nobody knows, if, if they're so new that uh -huh. they don't know, because we're asking the question, what do you do, all of that. So we're assuming Fair. from zero. Okay. What, like automate, you mean APIs, right? Like the product that you want to automate needs to have APIs, correct? Yes, yes. So I think that I want to make that clear that it's just not, you need to make sure that the product that you do want to automate has APIs and the APIs that you need to do these things. And so, it, you know, you start by looking at the developer documentation, you have to look to see if it's available for you, and then you can pick and choose what you want to automate. And I think that, you know, like you said, start small, but maybe all you're doing is doing gets, right? Like that might be just get information, then you're not messing with it. Because I think there is a fear of, I'm gonna screw something up. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that fear is real. Mm -hmm. you, you, will, you will make mistakes when you automate. It's just, you know, like it's like you, like me telling Denise, like she's gonna write perfect code. I do. Every I do. Time, every time, <laughs> I don't believe that for a second, okay? So, yeah, so bugs happen. Yeah, and so th some of those bugs are logical sometimes, uh, and sometimes they're just they're just flat out mistakes. So I think you should expect that yeah. as well uh, with automation. I think that's a good point. Yeah. 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 So and and that's the thing. You're right. Without the APIs, it is super difficult. Not impossible. It is super difficult to yeah. to automate those things. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that from uh, to summarize, I think you know people would want to see what are the manual tasks that they're doing all the time. Um, do, are the APIs available for them to even automate? Because like we said, if they aren't, it might not be worth it because if it's that super difficult, it might not be worth maybe doing, um, what did you call it? Click ops, Click -ops. Is, yes. is better in that sense. <laughs> but um, you know, those are the two things that they want to take a look at. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's, I think we covered some of those topics. Um, we'll probably I cover did, more in, yeah, in and future I, episodes. I'm going to close with a question for you. Okay, you, you've, you've thrown automation at me. What does automation mean to you now that we've had this discussion? Has it influenced or changed the way you think about things or do you have this thought in mind as to what automation is for you as a developer? What, when I say automation, what is that? From a developer, developers because we know all about APIs, we know how to use APIs, we tend to go and try to automate things just, I mean, I said I was messing with you and said you were being lazy about it, but you know, all that IOT stuff, that's like the first thing is like, oh, well, I don't wanna go walk over there to go turn on the lights, let me go and do that. Um, but from like a work developer perspective, you know, we automate our testing, we automate our unit testing, we automate our feature testing, we automate our load so that all it does running a CI CD pipeline we can just have it all kick off when we come in the next day. All of the test cases are run, like we run all the test cases, we see the results, and then we can evaluate that. So that's a lot of the automation. Rather than somebody clicking it at the end of the day or like kicking off the build and all of that, that's how a lot of the developers automate things um, to let things happen when we're sleeping. So we're not the only ones. Oh, no. Automation isn't just that, like, a, I think there's that, automation for developers as well. I think that there's automation oh, okay. all across the board. I don't even think only in tech, right? Because you can automate, yeah, yeah. Um, if, if you're doing social media, you can automate when your posts are coming out. And there are products that do that, right? So there's automation not just in tech roles, there's automation everywhere. Yeah, well. <laughs> I think we, um, we've covered a lot about automation, what automation is and what it provides somebody, which is basically you know, all the things we talked about, what it provides you, for example. 
If you have other ideas about automation and things that could help you out, we'd love to hear about those in the comments down below. And, and really, it's meaningful when, and we take them seriously. So please comment on it. Let us know what you think about automation and how it helps you. Yeah. Anything, final thoughts? Hopefully, I think that, the, like I said, it's a loaded question. So there are many other episodes that will probably cover things about automation. And so let us know what you want to hear, and then we will talk about it. Great. Well, this is The Daily Stand-Up. Thanks for joining, and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.